you haven't watched it already, I definitely encourage you to watch the new BBC documentary, R. Kelly, Sex Girls and Videotapes. It's on the iPlayer for those who didn't watch it live. So I got a chance to watch it and it's very, very insightful. Definitely worth something after paying your TV license to see them making some stuff that covers a different a different angle so anyway when you watch the documentary it's basically talking about r kelly's personal life his alleged love of underage girls his controlling ways in relationships and how he does how he does how he basically moves they even spoke about the stuff that went on with him and Aaliyah. but when you watch it they speak to ex-partners, they speak to two of his brothers and many other people that are involved with R. Kelly and the best way to start off the review is by saying from a young age you always hear that saying like money is the root of all evil, money is the root of all evil but the fact of the matter is money changes everything with people it doesn't matter whatever walk of life money changes situations that's just the truth that's just a fact that's just a a reality that everyone has to accept and when money's involved people are willing to do whatever now r kelly the people that was the the, the main people that spoke in the documentary are people who are no longer around r kelly so we have to look at both sides of the coin here so if you look if you're being fair you have to say half of the people are there maybe for some get back and half the people are only speaking out because they're no longer around him you never hear of people speaking out who are around the man never ever it's always people who's fell out with him or been thrown out the camp who speak out and then that question that makes you kind of question them if you're looking at it in a non-biased way to say, all right, why did it take you to leave the camp to speak out? If you've seen all these things happening, why did it take you to leave his camp to speak out on these things? Like you've seen these things happening at the time. So why did you speak out then? Why is it when you fell out and you're no longer making money with the man that you're speaking out? So anyway... We have to first of all speak about the saying that his love for underage women that he used to go to schools to pick up girls, go to colleges and pick up young girls and bring them back to I'm guessing his his mansion where they said that he had all kind of sex cults going on and all that. Now the main thing you have to look at with that is the people that are around him because this man is a superstar. During the documentary, the guy who made the documentary was actually outside one of the concerts and there was a small crowd of protesters and people just going in, ignoring the protesters, going in. So you have to look at the fact that R. Kelly is a man who's probably got millions in the bank, famous. So this man can practically pull whatever woman he wants if that's his vice for underage girls he can bring in whatever woman he wants it's down to the people that's around him to say this is wrong now i'm not saying they haven't said that but from the actions of the people in this documentary they haven't said that they've let it just they've just let it go on it's only after the fact they've started speaking out so why what, what was going on before that you ignored it's only now that you're speaking out and r kelly it, 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 you can obviously see that the man's the man's definitely most certainly got an issue even when some of the stories what the studio engineer was saying that he, he had two women naked bent over the, the the mixing desk or whatnot now i guess that's probably i wouldn't say that's a crime if that's how, if that's what helps him make good music you can't say that's a crime. The main thing that, which I think the BBC kept moving away from, is 
his involvement with underage girls. Now we all know the Aaliyah story that Aaliyah was with R. Kelly and, and got married to him. But we have to look at the fact that Aaliyah's parents sent her there. And you have to think about that as a parent. If your daughter comes home to you and says, I want to be a singer, this man has offered to move me in to his home. What are you going to do as a parent? Are your morals going to allow you to send your 14-year-old daughter to live with a grown man? I think he was 28 at the time or 30, something like that. Are your morals going to allow you to do that? Aaliyah's parents sent her there. Then his friend, what the, the BBC narrator, I don't know who it was, said, this was his friend of 14 years who admitted to being at the wedding of him and Aaliyah. It's only now the friend saying that the, all this stuff was wrong, but then again, look at yourself and say, if you had you, you and your friend, and your friend takes up a 14-year-old girl, whatever means he did to get around the, 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 the documentation, would you support being at that wedding? So you have to look at it originally to what I said. It's about money. It's about, it's about money. Because even with the sex tape, everyone knows that it was R. Kelly in the tape. Everyone knows that. But it's about money, again. Just like the actual policeman said it, or the lawyer who was on the show said it himself. The man's walking into court, he's got money, he's able to pay and get certain things sorted, get certain things to where he wants them to be. So, this man's vices are only being accelerated due to his success. And the only way of those things stopping is the people around him. There was actually, there was a woman on the documentary, was Jazzy, the woman who said she went into a room and a 14 year old girl crawled over to her and gave her oral sex. Now, Fair enough, she was being held against her will and she was forced. I'm going to, fair enough, let's say that that was the case. None of us know what happened, but let's say that was the case that that happened. Why in 2013 did she contact the man again who put her through this type of abuse, saying that she had hoped he changed his ways? And I don't want to hear people saying that, well, he had groomed her like that because he let her, she was gone and she came back. She was gone for several years and contacted the man back when he came to her city. In today's world of social media and, and the level of excitement that that brings, people are willing to do whatever to get close to these people. And that's just a fact of the matter. If the, man's a, if the man is a predator, that's not what's in question here. We have to look at why didn't the BBC ask these people? Why didn't you say nothing? Why didn't the BBC ask people that? What, well, why didn't you say nothing when this was going on? Why did you stand by? Why did you watch it? There's a lot of questions that definitely can be can be looked at and they need answering, but definitely something worth watching. So watch Catch It Up on your iPlayer and see what you think.